Sophia Loren once said, everything you see I owe to spaghetti, a sentiment not lost on Adam Swanson, a chef whose passion for the humble pasta runs deep. Since I was a kid, I remember huge pots of bubbling tomato sugo on the stove and my nonna scooping long strands of spaghetti out of the pot for me to try. Pasta is in my DNA. When Adam's not cooking in his restaurant in Australia, he's exploring how this versatile and popular food took over the world. Over the next 13 weeks, Adam travels from as far south as Sicily to the glorious mountains in the north. In his Fiat 500 Louis, he sweet talks nuns, herds sheep, learns all about pasta and cooks the most delicious recipes. This is my pilgrimage. Come share the journey with me. Adam's family comes from the south of Italy, in Naples, a region known for its infamous volcano. His first stop is in Sant'Antonio Abate to visit the sister of his nonna. It's been a journey, a long journey, but you know, something about it when my feet touch the ground in Italy, and especially now being in Naples, you know, Part of me feels complete, my home. My aunt and uncle own a modest hotel, La Sonrisa, and I'm looking forward to a quiet catch up after my long flight. So this is my uncle, and today is just something amazing. I'm gonna go find my auntie. So this is my auntie that all basically I've come all this way for, reminds me of my nonna back home. Just, you are everything to me, Zia. Zia is basically um, the closest thing to my nonna. The closest in looks, the closest in personality, closest in the way she cooks. Words cannot describe how she cooked and she controlled the kitchen. Nobody was allowed in her kitchen, no one. My nonna wasn't allowed in, I was the only one allowed in. Yes, I know I talk about it all the time, but she is the reason why I'm a chef today. She is the reason. There's no ifs or buts. Time moves quickly when you're enjoying the warmth and love of your family. And even though it's time to leave, I'm reminded by Mazia that no matter where we go, we take a little of each other everywhere. Ciao, 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 ciao. And so Adam's pilgrimage begins. After the break, the history of pasta. Just about everybody remembers growing up eating pasta, but there's a bit more to its history than you might think. Early records show that in Sicily, skilled artisans were making pasta as a commercial venture as early as the 12th century. But by the 1500s, the water running down the hills from around the Bay of Naples were powering the meals that made the pasta. As more pasta producers appeared, it became important to regulate the industry to ensure quality. This was achieved through guilds. The chapel of the 16th century regional pasta guild is in the church of Carmine Maggiore. To guarantee quality, you couldn't make or sell pasta unless you are part of the guild. And to be a part of the guild, you had to have the right equipment. The process involved hard manual labour, with many men working the tools. So if you had spaghetti-style pasta in around the 1100s, but it wasn't until at least four to 500 years later that tomatoes arrived. So what did they eat this dry pasta with? Thank you. 
Cheese seems to be a common feature in many pre-tomato recipes. Fresh sheep's cheese with only two days from making to consuming. By the 15th to 16th century, we started to see a different type of cheese being made from these herds of buffalo from all around Naples. And we get this amazing, beautiful buffalo mozzarella. It's not clear how buffalo arrived in Italy, but the Italians soon got to work producing cheese from their milk. Well, seriously, I would never thought in my lifetime that I'm going to milk a buffalo, but, you know, we're talking maybe three, four hundred kilos, sucker. And the heart's pounding a little bit, but... My hands are nice and warm. I'm ready to rock and roll. This is it. Small. One, two, one. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's quite open, let me tell you. <laughs> hey! Yeah, yeah, no pinch. Yeah, no pinch. Soft. A couple more practice lessons. <laughs> you laugh, <laughs> All right. You know, as a chef, you really want to know the raw products and get your hands on it, but I think it's better off that I leave the milking to the professionals and I'll just grab lots of buffalo mozzarella and enjoy it, cooking with it and eating it. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. Adam has tracked down a Michelin star chef that shows him a delicious pasta sauce made without tomatoes. Salvatore is going to show me a recipe using traditional ingredients but with his modern fusion twists and cooking methods. Salvatore, what's the ingredients we have here today? The carrots, uh -huh. uh, onion, celery, fat and the pot. It's the traditional ingredient Naples. Fantastic, Naples. very nice. So you're going to render down the pork fat in the pan and the pan has to be nice and hot? Yes, yes, very, very hot. This uh, local pot. Uh -huh. From, from Gragnano. From Gragnano. Near Naples. Look at the colour of that pork. Beautiful, nice and light and pink. It's still a good amount of fat. Beautiful. Yeah. So we fry off the vegetables yes. in a separate pan, but then we take the meat yeah. and add it to it. So you're always turning it. So Salvatore is always looking at it. It's not getting too brown and not too much colour on it. And nice and even. Okay. Is it ready? Yeah. You're happy with that? Okay. We'll swap? Translation. Okay. So now we swap over the pan to get our vegetables cooking, yes? Yes. Okay, in with the vegetables. This recipe, no tomato. No, no tomato, okay. but uh, onion. Onion is the basis yeah. to your sauce here. Yes. So we're just frying off the onion. Onion, carrots. carrots. And all these vegetables are evenly diced, all the same size, so they cook nice and evenly. Celery and the fat. And the fat. And pork. So in with the pork back into this pan now, the larger pan. And uh, vegetable water. The stock, water. Yeah. And then on with the cover. Top the, with the film or the, uh, cup. The grease paper, okay. yeah. And uh, cook for uh, six hours. Six hours. Five, six hours. Fantastic. The modern twist is about to come and it involves mozzarella. It's been six hours and the onions look really cooked out, Salvatore. Yes, and the, and the finish, the, the cook, uh, the pork is very, very soft uh, and the, the onion is very, very sweet. Because we've cooked it out the for onion. so long. Yes, yes. It smells amazing. Mm. Okay, so what's next? What's the next step to this dish? I cook the pasta. Okay, yeah. Uh, huh? In with the spaghetti? Yes. Inside. Boiling water? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. The sauce? Uh, no tomato, ma, no ma onion. Tomato. Yeah. So the onion is the basis to the sauce. So he purees it, gets it nice and smooth, strips the pork, tosses the pasta through, and I can't wait to see you finish this. Whilst the pasta is cooking, Salvatore has strained and pureed the sauce. So the pasta looks ready, Salvatore? See, it's ready, pasta. Okay. Look at that. 
Nice long spaghetti strands. Straight into the onion sauce. In the sauce, yeah. Mm. So that's the pork, the meat that you stripped apart, that you yeah. cooked for six hours. Okay. Oh, look at that. And for finish, two types of uh, mozzarella cheese. Two types? Yes. One's mocked. So that's going to work well with the sweetness of the onion, the pork. But uh, uh, these use uh, only mozzarella, uh -huh. okay, for top. So that's for your garnish, just to sit on top of yes. the pasta. And uh, uh -huh. these, the water. The only, water? Yes. So you're taking, you're squeezing that mozzarella, the smoke, just for the flavor, the water. That's yeah. amazing. And immediately the dish changes, nice and creamy, rich. Ah. And the smoke instantly. It's, uh, it's beautiful. So the dried tuna over the top, mix it through. Ah. On top. Onion sauce. A little more of the onion. The mozzarella. So the plain mozzarella just sitting on top. It's got spiciness from that leaf also. Oil, Italian, is, is ready. Salvatore, thank you very much, not only for allowing me in your kitchen, but showing me how much passion and love you have for food. And I really appreciate that. Thank Grazie. you so much. No, thank you. Ciao, Adam. Ciao. By the mid-17th century, pasta factories were springing up all over Italy, and one town in particular, Gragnano, devoted itself to the production of pasta. This street here in Gragnano was specifically designed for drying pasta. The afternoon breezes off the mountains, the morning breeze coming from the ocean. The street was full of pasta-making shops. We knew this because above these pasta-making stores was a symbol that told us these were official pasta-makers. I want you to get a sense of what this street would have been like back then. Imagine, row after row of long strands of pasta drying in the sun, the afternoon breeze wafting that beautiful smell of pasta down this street. Kids everywhere! And their job was to chewing the flies. Tomatoes were considered ornamental and not a food until about the 18th century. They arrived in the Kingdom of Naples around 1770 and the plant thrived in the fertile soil of San Marzano. Luigi, what makes the San Marzano tomato so special and unique? Uh, the San Marzano tomatoes, uh, a variety of uh, plum tomatoes, are considered by many chefs uh, um, the best tomatoes uh, in the world. I agree. <laughs> yes, the presence of, uh, of a number of uh, factors such mm. as the Mediterranean climate and uh, the soil. The San Marzano tomatoes, uh, compared to other kinds of tomatoes, mm. are thinner and uh, more pointed. Okay. Um, the flesh is much thicker yeah. and the taste is stronger. Uh, sweeter and um, the color is very rich. Very, very rich, rich uh, yeah. red and uh, less acidic. Tomatoes now are planted uh, in the full uh, uh, Agro Nocerino Sarnese Valley. That's the region, yes, the area? Yes, in where the, we are today, right here. Yes, in the soil, uh, in the shadow of the Monte Vesuvius. So that comes back to the soil being the richness of the tomato, it comes yes. from the volcanic soil. Yes, and beneficent of the influence uh, of the sea. So they help, the sea and the, and the Mount Vesuvius helps the tomatoes and the temperature not changing. That's yes. perfect. I understand back home in Australia, we grow a lot of tomatoes in the glass house, but here you have specific rules and guidelines to growing the San Marzano tomato. Yes, yes. We support them in the, in the whole technical process. But with the harvest, it's not done by machine, is it? The picking. It's all done by hand, no. I understand. Yes. Uh, so for uh, guarantee the quality, and the, the color and yeah. the, of the product. So from picking, when you receive the tomato, yes. to into the tin is how long? Uh, time is a long, uh, maximum of four hours. Four hours. Four so hours. from being picked to getting into the tin is four hours. And that's what I love. I have to look at these things. Look at the flesh, look <laughs> at the color. Taste. The smell of the tomato. I've got to... Yes. Oh, the taste is so fresh and clean. And you know what, Luigi? 
This yes. makes me think that I need to cook myself a plate of spaghetti napolitano. A recipe inspired by the streets of my mother's hometown, Naples. I have basil, buffalo mozzarella, and what am I going to be cooking? Well, spaghetti nap, of course. After the break, Adam's spaghetti napolitano. This recipe is simplicity at its best, and using top quality ingredients will help you achieve the ultimate plate of pasta. For the full list of ingredients and method, visit adamspastapilgrimage.com. Getting this recipe started, we need to get our spaghetti into the pot. Adding a good amount of salt to your water will help create that perfect plate of pasta. Just give your spaghetti a little stir to make sure that it all goes down into the boiling water and cooks nice and evenly. So the pasta is going to take about eight to 10 minutes and in that time our sauce will be cooked. So this dish is really simple. To get the sauce happening, we need to get our olive oil on into the pan, a good amount. It just will help with the flavor of the San Marzano tomatoes and garlic. I noticed whilst I was in Naples, you know, there was a flavor of garlic in my sauce, but I could never ever find it. But what I found was what they do is they grab their garlic, hip in hand, grab a clove, you know, there's no need to chop, nice fresh garlic. So what we're doing, we're infusing the garlic flavor into the olive oil. That way we can remove it about six minutes in. I can smell that garlic infusing into the olive oil. I'm just gonna get my heat up a touch. In with our tomatoes. Now, it might splatter around a little bit, so just step back. Using your wooden spoon, just squashing those beautiful whole tomatoes down. And what I love here, I love seeing that golden olive oil start to infuse and work together with those rich red tomatoes. And that's what a spaghetti napolitana is all about. So that's going to need about five minutes. Bring it up to the boil, then drop it down to a nice simmer. Now, every sauce just needs a little sprinkle, a little bit of seasoning, just a little bit of salt. Now, I'm not adding too much because of the fact that I've added a good amount of salt into my pasta water. And by the time I take out that fantastic spaghetti, add it into the pan, the flavors will come together and I won't need any more seasoning. Don't forget to take the garlic out of the sauce. Now, here's my tip. Take the spaghetti straight out of the pasta water, into the pan. Look at that, those beautiful long strands of spaghetti. Just using the sauce and the heat from the spaghetti will help finish off the cooking process. The flavor of that sauce jumps into the spaghetti and your pasta becomes a family classic. And this is why I love this dish so much. Mix it all through, a little bit of basil I need. No need to chop, just using your Fingers tearing the fresh basil straight into the pan. Here is my little twist to spaghetti napolitano. Buffalo mozzarella. I love this cheese. Look at that. Look at this beautiful curd. With the heat, just dropping small little torn pieces into the spaghetti. Give it a little toss and we're almost at the finish line. Let that heat in the pan. Just melt down that buffalo. And there it is. Simplicity at its best an Italian classic, Spaghetti Napolitano. Adam's pilgrimage began in Naples, where the first type of pasta being made commercially were long strands known as spaghetti. Adam learned that pasta in Italy predated the tomatoes by hundreds of years, and recipes created over time use the local produce available. But more importantly, as pasta became more popular, specialist tools and guilds were developed to ensure pasta quality was maintained. Pasta making was left to the experts. The next part of my pilgrimage takes me to a place that was invaded by many armies. Each civilization brought new ideas, and each left something of their culture behind. And perhaps the greatest cultural inheritance was left by the Arabs, couscous. Come join me in Sicily. For this episode's recipes, stories, and more, visit adamspastapilgrimage.com.